Next up, uh, we have Shana Baser. Shana is the community manager um, at the Crypto Climate Accords, and she's going to uh, share a little bit about the Crypto Climate Accord with us today. Take it away, Shana. Thanks so much, Angie, and thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to, to talk about the Crypto Climate Accord just a bit and uh, hopefully begin to highlight the tremendous impact of Protocol Labs and Filecoin in uh, really driving progress here. So I joined the Energy Web team back in June. I work with Miram and Andres, who you heard from earlier today. And before that, I spent most of my career working within the United Nations and humanitarian system. So a lot of conversations about the urgency with which we need to address uh, the climate crisis and how we need to save the planet and ultimately improve the quality of life for all of her inhabitants. And um, not surprisingly, <laughs> the fundamental challenge with global interdisciplinary work is that it's impossible to reach consensus. I mean, we're, we're lucky if we even get everybody in the room. And um, one of the things that I think is just so exciting about the Crypto Climate Accord is it's, it's a truly global effort of stakeholders from across crypto and blockchain, fintech, climate, energy, who've all come together with a sense of unity and collaboration. I mean, some people are considered direct <laughs> uh, competitors to one another. And so to see such a level of, of enthusiasm and action behind a cause is really incredible. Everyone has come together, not only to deliver on, broadly speaking, green crypto, but to execute this in a way that is going to create pathways for other industries to follow suit and create that lasting legacy change uh, across industries. The Crypto Climate Accord is not an organization, and I'll, I'll go into a bit of detail about who's involved. Uh, the best way to think of it is just as a set of objectives. We're here to decarbonize crypto and blockchain by 2040. The community of supporters includes over 180 companies. Uh, this initiative launched in April, so we've seen a tremendous amount of growth in a very short time. And more than half that actually officially as of last week, we officially surpassed the number of supporters with the number of signatories. So more than half are making an additional public commitment to achieve net zero emissions uh, from their electricity consumption and verify their decarbonization using best practices within the next decade, uh, which is really, really groundbreaking um, given the, the challenges that that we have ahead of us and, and really encouraging to see this kind of action and momentum in such a, a vital space. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity for the crypto sector to emerge as a global leader in decarbonization for multiple reasons. It's been alluded to a number of times over the course of today's call, but this year in particular, we saw a significant amount of criticism surrounding the environmental impact of crypto. I think the, the simplest talking point is that crypto is not the only energy intensive industry. It's just one, but we have an opportunity to do something that I, I don't think anything else can, anyone else can do, which is embrace uh, rapid innovation and make change very quickly in a very decentralized manner. Uh, and, and one that's very rooted in solutions that actually have widespread application for, for all users. The impact of moving forward really aggressively with this type of an initiative is, uh, is really tremendous when we think about the renewable energy market. Uh, Miram earlier today was walking us through the, the, what, what RECs are and the global market there. And even by the most conservative estimates of the crypto industry's annual consumption, it's more than half of what the global market for renewable energy certificates actually is. So what we can do together is not only decarbonize, but position crypto stakeholders, whether they're miners or exchanges, uh, as a new class of renewable energy buyer, really grow that market. And that contributes to electrifying hard to reach areas that contributes to investment in more projects that are ultimately going to enable us to tackle these really big daunting global goals uh, in, a very, in a very nuanced way. The Crypto Climate Accord is not owned by anybody, true to the spirit of 
our work. It's, it's decentralized. So nonprofit Energy Web joined forces back in April with the environmental think tank Rocky Mountain Institute and uh, a US-based regulatory engagement firm, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation, uh, just to begin convening activities. So helping make sure that all appropriate stakeholders are actually in the room, that we have a path forward, that we're able to do a needs assessment and understand what are those gaps in information and technology that we then need to work together to address. The way that the CCA operates is very much like a, like a potluck. You bring what you can when you can. By being a supporter, what that means is companies are just signaling that this is a priority. This is not a certification or greenwashing, a way of just saying, you, yeah, you've done what you needed to do and you're all set and can white paper yourself out of the mess, the mess that you've made. It's a, a very intentional effort to really focus on developing the standards, developing the technology that we need to move our industry forward. The three primary activities under the CCA umbrella really start with uh, this idea around benchmarking and good industry practices. The Rocky Mountain Institute or RMI has spearheaded a lot of this work in collaboration with a number of other companies within uh, the community. It's focused on how we actually account for scope three emissions associated with the crypto industry. And their report on crypto carbon accounting should be out hopefully by the end of this month. And that clarity is, is really essential. We heard earlier today from a number of speakers, just being able to produce that range and develop a strategy around that to decarbonize is really the first step. And uh, what's exciting about their work is that that is then proceeding the next part, which is good buyer practices. How do we issue more clarity around if you do X, you can claim why. Reducing that barrier to entry uh, and bridging that gap in, in misinformation that's necessary in order for companies to actually adopt a decarbonization strategy is really critical and it has to come first before any of the technology that we build. So there's been a lot of really fantastic uh, groundbreaking development on that aspect. From the tech sol uh, solution toolbox, I'll go into the details of what we're doing there, but uh, I think Miram and Andres did a fantastic job of work walking us through through zero and how uh, the collaboration with Protocol Labs has really informed and guided um, that development. And then the third aspect of our work, which is just as essential, is being able to actually report out what we're doing and making sure that we're telling the story of crypto in a way that is truthful. Um, but also in a way that's that's really clear and that's really digestible and understandable. Um, offering these clear pathways for other industries and those within our industry to follow suit. Um, and also to, to bridge that gap in understanding of, you know, where are we now? Where do we need to go? What are we doing to get there? What lessons have we learned along the way? The Crypto Climate Accords solutions have primarily focused on delivering technology and standards for miners, exchanges, and investors, primarily around these three key themes, which is uh, energy calculation, the digitization of renewables, and simplifying the procurement process, and delivering this verification of proof of green. So essentially breaking that down, uh, particularly with the work that RMI is leading, by enabling whether it's exchanges, mining operators, really any stakeholder within the space to be able to estimate the emissions that they have associated with either their crypto holdings or production, what have you, paired with uh, simplifying the process of procurement. So by tokenizing and digitizing environmental commodities, starting with RECs through zero, but ideally branching into carbon offsets, uh, carbon removal credits, so that any type of stakeholder can pursue the ESG strategy that makes the most sense to them. Uh, and then further pairing that with this ability to track and verify renewable energy use, these are the three key ingredients to a global decarbonization, industry-wide decarbonization strategy, ultimately, by using decentralized identifiers to anchor the identity of, for example, a miner on chain, being able to pair that with their renewable energy use and deliver proof of green to their mining pool operator, to investors, to regulators, you're creating more opportunities for consumers to 
drive demand for these types of projects that align with their sustainability vision. And also we're creating the pathway so that if there is regulation down the line or as investor priorities continue to hone in on this, the systems are already in place in order to be able to meet those, those needs, whether it's voluntary or involuntary compliance. So ultimately that's what we're working towards with the Crypto Climate Accord. It's this private sector led uh, almost very grassroots feel type of an environment uh, where folks contribute what they can in order to build these clear pathways towards decarbonization. Um, it's an incredibly exciting environment and love that we have the opportunity to work with Protocol Labs and Filecoin through this, this umbrella endeavor. And for those here who are interested in learning more, um, I hope you'll get in touch with us. Thank you so much.